This tutorial will describe the general usage of the Oliver Hazard Perry class FFG7 sonar stations. It will briefly describe all sonar stations on the FIG-7 and how to successfully operate those stations in conjunction with the NAV map screen. For detailed information on the FIG-7 sonars and all other components of the game, we encourage you to consult the manual. The FFG towed array is a passive sonar that is towed behind the ship at the end of a towed cable. Towing the sonar at the end of a cable reduces own ship self noise that interferes with sonar detection and allows the sonar to be towed below the acoustic layer to better detect deep contacts. This is the FIG towed array broadband display. The FIG's towed array sonar system will automatically tag every contact it holds detection upon. The tag summary table in the upper left lists all the contacts that have been automatically tagged by the sonar system. The whiz wheel below the tag summary shows a graphical representation of the sonar beams formed by the towed array sonar. The towed array has 22 beams, two end fire beams, one looking forward and the other looking aft and 20 conical beams between the two end fire beams. The conical shaped beams lead the two initial contact bearings, the true bearing and the ambiguous bearing, equally spaced from the heading of the towed array. The waterfall display on the right shows a number of degrees from the array heading to the target for either a port or starboard target. Marking a contact will assign track numbers to the contact and display the contact on the nav screen. Bearing ambiguity can be resolved by changing a ray heading and watching the relative bearing to the contact in the waterfall display. If the true bearing is to starboard, then a course change to starboard will reduce the relative bearing. The contact will move up the waterfall. The same is true for a port course change and a true port bearing. If the contact on the waterfall display moves downward, then the true bearing is the bearing away from the course change. Since the target is moving down the waterfall display with this course change to port, the true bearing to the contact is to starboard. A tagged contact can be selected in three different ways. One, click the tag row in the summary table. Two, click the contact on the waterfall display. Or three, select the beam that holds contact. The mark button marks the current bearing of the selected tag each time the mark button is pushed. Assigning a sonar tracker to a tag will update the bearing every two minutes on both the nav and the TMA screens. The LOFAR search screen displays the 22 towed array search beams and the assigned tags in each beam. Selecting a beam and then clicking the single beam button will display the selected beam in an expanded beam format. Individual frequency lines in a contact's profile will be displayed and can be used with the profile display at the top of the screen to classify the contact. The slave to tag button can be used to automatically switch to the beam which contains the tag as the tag moves from one beam to the next due to contact and own ship motion. The FIG's hull mounted sonar is controlled from this display. The two main modes for the hull sonar are passive and active. In the passive mode, the display will show a broadband waterfall display. Detected contacts can be marked and contacts will appear on the nav screen's geosit display. The active mode transmits sound into the water and listens for an echo bouncing off a contact. The advantage of an active sonar contact is that the player receives both bearing and range to the contact. The disadvantage is that active sonar may reveal your presence to an adversary. The active sonar mode has several sub-modes that can be selected. The user's manual describes all the sub-modes in detail. This concludes our FIG-7 sonar tutorial. Please consult the manual for a more detailed description of how to use the FIG-7 sonar stations and tactics to employ those stations successfully in the game.